This is the Joe Piscopo Show on AM 970. The answer. Good morning, Joe on the radio. Let's get this party started, baby. It's Thursday, January 27th. Freezing outside, snow coming in for the weekend, but we got this. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel L. Davis is a senior fellow for Defense Priorities, former lieutenant colonel in the United States Army, author of 11th Hour in 2020 America. Uh, Colonel, welcome to the program, sir. Great to have you with us this morning. Hey, thanks for having me. appreciate it. Well, we're confused about Russia, about Ukraine, and the chances of the conflict uh, uh, that that is going on. Uh, they're trying to do some kind of uh, diplomacy. Uh, does this spiral into a full-blown war, Colonel Davis? I mean, you, you, you just have to be honest and say that the chances are, are increasing almost by the hour. Uh, because, you know, the response that we sent to Russia was absolutely predictable. But also their response is going to be at least partially predictable because we didn't address their number one, in fact, their overriding concern, which is they want written guarantees that NATO's got, going to be extended to Ukraine and, and to Georgia. And, of course, we didn't. And now that their response this morning, at least the initial response out of some officials in Moscow, uh, has said, OK, well, if that's the way it's going to be, then we're going to probably do some other things like, for example, we're going to arm the, the uh, resistance in Luhansk and Donetsk. Uh, and we're going to send, we're going to recognize them as independent countries. And we're going to send uh, potentially other uh, weapons and missile systems in other, quote, sensitive areas, which, of course, probably means uh, missiles, uh, probably nuclear tip missiles somewhere in the Pacific or Atlantic, yeah. uh, possibly in Venezuela. And this thing is just going to continue to spiral. And I, and I really do worry about what's going to come next. This is uh, and, and is it worth it? I mean, is it worth it that we even maybe, uh, you know, started started this? Uh, don't don't telling Russia what to do. Do you think the Ukraine is worth plunging the U.S. into war, sir? Gracious, no. I, I mean, that, I, I've been, you know, screaming this from the rooftops for, <laughs> for many months, actually for years. That there is why in God's name do we want to risk potential nuclear war with yeah. Russia over yeah. something that has nothing to do with our national security, something that's on their border that's been a dispute for literally hundreds of years, not even decades, but hundreds of years between the Ukraine and, and Russian people. And this is something that is an existential issue for Russia, and at best a very distant peripheral issue for the United States. It makes no sense for us to do this except it's just hubris and arrogance to say, no, we're not going to let Putin tell us what we're going to do. We're going to do whatever we want to do. And, look, you can be hubris and, and arrogant, I guess, all you want in your own confines in your home or something. But when that arrogance potentially could put Americans in harm's way, that has to be a red line. And we better stop it while we still can. I can't figure out uh, how why this administration, uh, Colonel Davis, is so stuck in like another decade. And it's like it's uh, the, all these Obama leftovers and holdovers, President Obama holdovers uh, running the presidency or whatever's happening. Uh, they, they seem to be stuck in when, oh, this is Russia. We have to go up against. Vlad-. They're obsessed with Putin. They're obsessed when you're absolutely right. We have such a problem on our southern border. We've been talking about we don't address that. And um, is this just the military industrial complex in action, sir? Well, it, it, that's a part of it, but it's even bigger than that, uh, because really you, this, this all started, frankly, with the Clinton administration in 1994, when he first hmm. opened the door to NATO, completely ignoring then um, uh, Yeltsin, then Putin, and then Medvedev when he became president later yeah. on, yeah. Uh, all the way through the Bush administration, all the way through the Obama administration. In fact, you can say that Really, Bush and Obama were even worse than, than Clinton was. At, at least Trump, uh, you know, pushed back a lot on Russia and was, uh, or, or was, was not trying to antagonize them, was actually trying to have decent relations. And of course, he took all kinds of heat for that. But uh, uh, President Biden so far, he just kind of seems to just be playing the status quo. He doesn't really seem to be that engaged in it. But the problem is you can't just maintain the status quo here. Something has to change or we're going to pay a price. Yeah. Now, how do we de-escalate this, Colonel Davis? Uh, is is the or is it too late? It, it's not too late yet. Until until missiles are flying in the air and bullets are shooting, there's always a chance. Uh, and Russia has said their already their initial official response has been, well, we're willing to talk some of these peripheral issues that the United States mentioned that they're talking about, like arms control, 
uh, and uh, transparency on, on exercises, et cetera. They go, those are fine. We'll talk about those, but those are just a second. We got to talk about the main thing. We need to talk about the main thing. And look, it's in our interest to take NATO expansion for Ukraine off the table. The last thing that we should have in our alliance is a, is a disruptive and a chaotic country that has humongous disputes within its borders and, of course, obviously on its outside border. Let's just take that off the table and say, hey, we're going to put a moratorium on this. For the foreseeable future, we won't even consider this. And then maybe Moscow has something to negotiate with on some of the other issues as well. But if we don't address their primary issue, we won't even get to the second ones. Uh, talking about Lieutenant Colonel Daniel L. Davis, the book is 11th Hour in 2020 America, 11th Hour in 2020 America. Before we let you go, sir, uh, the 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 Joe Biden and, and this whole administration, the credibility after Afghanistan around the world and that something the American press, the mainstream uh, American press will not address. Our credibility is out the window in that regard on any international crisis because of Afghanistan. Do you agree with that, Colonel Davis? Well, you know, I, I've actually talked to a number of, uh, of our diplomats, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, of our diplomatic uh, partners around the world, other uh, members of other countries, yeah. and, and they actually don't view it that way, nor do I, because they say, look, the issue wasn't that you got out, though it was very chaotic and uh, much worse than it needed to be, but our, our Rick head scratcher was why you stayed there that long. You should have gotten out before that, because they understand that was a peripheral issue. This one is not a peripheral issue, and more than the credibility hmm. stake of you know doing what we say, the real credibility problem, and this is echoed, is that we keep doing things that don't make sense like this. Yeah, well said. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis. Uh, Colonel, thanks so much. Uh, we'll t- hopefully talk soon, and uh, thanks for joining right, us this early. In the m- Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for your yeah. service, uh, Colonel Daniel, uh, Daniel L. Davis.